Madam President, members of council and my fellow members of the Southern African Institute of Mining and Strategy. I've been a mining engineer now for 42 years, but my heritage in the Southern African mining industry goes back to its roots in early Kimberley, where my great grandfather was listed as a diamond digger in 1880. I've absolutely no idea as to where my family came from before that. And so the modern South African mining industry and I have a parallel provenance in having been established uh, in, in Kimberley, which really, I suppose, goes to the core of my love for this wonderful industry of ours. I come from a family of miners. I was born and grew up in the Stilfontein gold mine where my father was responsible for the sinking of the famous Margaret shaft. And at one point I had five active mining engineers in our family, our immediate family, my father, my uncle, my cousin, my brother-in-law and myself, all members of the SIMM at the same time and employed separately in the five great mining companies of the time. So my roots in the industry go very, very deep. But my career has taken a very different one to that of my father, who is a, a common and garden Stoffelkart, a miner. Like, like him, my early production career was in the gold mines where I worked for Angler Var from graduate trainee to mine manager. I then had the privilege of working in the consulting sector with uh, great companies like SRK Consulting and Bateman's as senior mining engineer and for the Mineral Corporation as principal mining engineer and director of mining. However, my career thereafter followed a very, very different course. From a mining engineering perspective, digging holes in the ground, which is my first great love, I've been instrumental in the development of two major platinum mines, one of which I took from bore, first borehole to capital construction, and from which I raised close to a billion dollars in the immediate wake of the global financial crisis of 2008. Of that particular achievement, I am proud but I don't necessarily see these projects as being the pinnacle of my career or my paramount contribution to the industry. What's important for me in my career is that I've always seen the mining industry as a developmental one and I've pursued the mission of, of mining and development consistently throughout my career. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have had the freedom to traverse the different aspects of the sector from production mining to research into the social and economic complexity of the industry and also the development of policy. I was deeply involved in the writing of policy that led to our current statutes, the Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act, which while by no means is a perfect piece of legislation, was in fact the first legislation in the world to entrench social license and the equitable benefit uh, of mining as a prerequisite to mining permission. These tenants are now reflected in most mining and mineral rights regimes around the world today. And for that, we as a country uh, should be proud. And, and I was, and I'm particularly proud of being part of, 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 of that process. Um, for the last three years, I've also been senior advisor at the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy on the development of our national mine closure strategy, which again is a world first in that it's the first national strategy to actively address or proactively address the issues of ensuring a post-mining economy for our mining dependent communities. Um, from a community perspective, I've also been integrally involved in the more prominent community mining issues since the transition in government and was the only South African to serve in the World Economic Forum Global Agenda Council for Mining and Metals for the full 10 years of its existence. And that gave me a very good insight into international thinking and, and the way that other countries think and do things. And that served us well in what I've had to do in this country. I've served on a number of judicial commissions and inquiry and government advisory bodies, but Within that diversity of my career, the uh, great achievement for me was the honor to have been appointed as an adjunct professor at the University of Cape Town, which is one of the finest universities in Africa, but in fact doesn't have a department of mining engineering. And so that recognition of mining beyond the engineering and the importance of, of the work that I've been doing was for me extremely important and, and is to this day. But in looking at, at, at my role in the industry and what I hope to achieve, 
the by far the most important achievements for me have, have, lain, have lain in the, the service that I've been able to give the sector through the assignment. I've been a fellow of the Institute for 27 years and I've served in our council for over 12 years. And during this time, we progressively adapted uh, the SIMM from being a largely conservative techno-economic engineering institute to an organization that is today actively adapting to the increasing economic, social, and environmental complexity of the industry. And it's this development in our thinking has culminated in the establishment during your tenure as president of the SIMM Environmental, Social, Governance, and Sustainability uh, committee for which I've had the privilege of working with uh, people like Gordon Smith and and Sam and yourself uh, in in putting together and and being elected as the first chairman and through this ESGS committee we're we're opening up the institute to to other disciplines uh, and through the diversification of membership that will be better equip our professionals our own traditional professionals to navigate this increasing complexity in the sector, but also bring in a diversity that I think will serve the Institute better in, in the manner in which it influences um, our sector going forward. So without question, as you asked me, what I'm most proud in my career is, is this honor that the Institute has bestowed on me today. And, and it's an award that I thank you personally and the, the council for most sincerely. Um, I was also very touched by Mark Pudifani's remarks on, on my receipt of the award. And I, I have to reciprocate by both congratulating Mark and, and by saying to him, he's, he's one of the people who have been one of my inspirations and, and for whom I have the utmost respect in what he's done with Anglo-American through the Future Smart Mining Imperative, which is uh, it embodies the whole spirit of sustainability in mining, where a mining company is actually, under Mark, uh, adopted the premises of, 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 of uh, thriving uh, communities, healthy environment, and trusted corporate leadership, which is exactly where the mining industry should be going. And, and I'm a great disciple of that philosophy. And so thank you all for your, for your remarks on, on my receipt of my award, and, uh, and I wish you the same uh, on yours. So, Madam President, it's been a great pleasure to serve under you as our president over the last year. Um, it's been a great inspiration, and I wish you well for your future, both in the SIMM and in your career. Thank you very much indeed.